Hello, and welcome to the Open Sidewalks tutorial. In today's video, we will be introducing the Open Sidewalks Tasking Manager and show how it interfaces with the OpenStreetMap ID editor. To begin, we will use a browser to navigate to tasks.opensidewalks.com as shown. When you navigate, you will be either logged in already. I'm going to go ahead and log out so that we can show the login process. When logging in, a pop-up will take me to the OpenStreetMap login interface, whereby I'll be asked to put in my username and password, and then it will take me to an authorization page to allow open sidewalks to access my open street map information and account. I will grant access. And that means that when you map in the tasking manager, it will populate your contributions into open street map. The page that now opens is my profile page. However, this does not allow me to change all of my settings. To change my settings, I'll go back to my user space use the pull down menu to go to settings. And here I'm able to change my settings, my F editor, as well as the language that I'm using primarily. And that will allow for different translations through the tasking manager. In addition, I can change my notification settings. Now I'm ready to map. The first step is to choose a project from among the Open Sidewalks projects that are currently available. So I will navigate to the Explore Projects tab. In this tab, the first projects that will show up are the high priority projects. You can see that we have several high priority projects and additional projects that are currently ongoing and have received uh, continuous contribution. There are two pages here as well. You can uh, browse through these. For today, I will choose to map in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I clicked on the project page and that takes me directly to that project. What I see here on the left is the name of the project that I chose. I'm not going to just map anything anywhere. We are specifically focused on Belém. Um, and the tasks that is involving crossings. There's a very short description here of what is this project about and who is coordinating this project. On the right is information, a map information about where the task is taking place. I can zoom to the tasks to see a map. What I see here is that the project coordinator not only outlined a region for mapping, but also identified those regions that are highest priority. So you can see here in a pink background are these tasks that are high priority for this particular project. If I would like to start contributing, which we want you to do, we can go ahead and click on contribute. This allows me to now select a project. For example, I can select one here, but as we noted, the project coordinators wished that we start with a high priority, um, and so I will select ones of the priority area tasks. Once I select this task, I lock it. So I'm going to click on Map Selected Task, and this opens up the ID editor. What I want to demonstrate is what it looks like to another user when you have locked this task. So I'm going to go ahead and um, explore the same project. When I zoom to the tasks, you can see that the task that I have chosen is shown in red with a lock icon on top of it. What we're asking is that when you're choosing to contribute, you try to avoid any tasks that are adjacent to ones that are locked. So as a second user, I should not choose any of these tasks that share a border with a locked task. We'll try to go around 
may be still in the priority areas, but not those that are adjacent. OK, back to what happened here. So when I chose a task, it showed me three panes showing up. The leftmost pane is that um, that populates the information from OpenStreetMap about this area. So if I click on any I, uh, elements in the map, for example, a road, or even I see here a crossing, I notice that the information that is currently available on OpenStreetMap will show up. The next pane, this pane, shows the aerial imagery, the satellite imagery that we have currently with an overlay of the map information from OpenStreetMap. This is going to be the area where you will be editing and drawing in the crossings. The last pane on the right is part of the tasking manager pane, and it has three different tabs. The leftmost tab is the completion tab. This is what we will use to finish the task once we have completed the editing task in the editor. The next tab is the instructions. Here is where we're going to be able to um, see what the instructions are for this task so that if you need a refresher on what the tags are, this is where it will be. And lastly, there's going to be a history of everything that had to do with this task. For now, in order to be able to see the map better, I'm going to close this drawer and start my mapping task. Now, this video is not about the mapping itself, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Rather, I'm going to show you how to close out the, ta the task once I've finished the mapping in the ID editor and saved it. So now we're assuming that I've already completed the task. I go back to opening this panel. I click on the completion tab if it's not already there. And then I report whether the task is completely mapped, yes, no, or the imagery is bad. I will say no, this is not done because I have not finished it. And I will say um, that not complete if I wish to add a comment. I can submit this. Or if you want to relinquish the lock on this but not actually report what happened, you can select another task. Do not use the split task because these are small tasks and therefore not necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and submit the task. Now we see that that task that I had chosen is back to being available for mapping and high priority. That is because I reported that I did not finish the mapping there. In the next video, we will show how to map this task of crossing and therefore we'll be able to actually report that we have completed this task. This concludes this Open Sidewalks video.